tonight I want to kick off a new series on on parables. Amen. I love the parables. We did some good studies, thoughts. I hope it was good on Bible characters. Amen. Just some good men and women in the Bible to look up to. But these short stories, these parables that were given by Jesus apply to our lives. And there's a good one found in Matthew 25 and verse 14, the stewardship of talents. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Can I, see, can I say that Jesus has gone to heaven? Amen. But he's coming back for a church. He's gone to a far country. The good news is he's given us the goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other. Everybody say five talents. Give me five, somebody. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. He that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, after a long time, the Lord of those summits, servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides them five talents more. His Lord sent unto him. Everybody say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Everybody say, faithful. God's looking for a faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold! I've gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, same words, it's like an echo. Good stuff. Well done, good and faithful servant. Everybody say faithful. Everybody say, I want to be faithful. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you need to be faithful to God. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Everybody still with me? Everybody take a deep breath. I know it's over more it's more than five scriptures, but hang with me. Praise God. Here we go. Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I soweth not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. He shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Up to one more scripture. They say one more scripture. You don't have to turn there. Proverbs 20 and 6. There's a question that says, But a faithful man, who can find? Praise God. Lord bless you tonight. You can be seated. But a faithful man... Who can find? A talent is a biblical word. The definition can be referred to as a gift, a skill, and also a material that's been invested, a talent. Talent comes from the Hebrew word kakar, which means a round gold or silver disc. Kakar. Being faithful. I want to talk to you about this tonight. This is this is something that I could stand up on a, on a soap box and just start, just go down the list. This is 
this is something that every pastor, amen, deals with. Amen? In a church, pastor in a church, amen, everybody say faithfulness. Praise God. This applies to everybody, and really it applies to those that aren't here tonight. Right? Tell them to watch this in the archives. Amen? Faithfulness. Small things matter to God. Small things really do matter to God. They may be insignificant in our eyes, but there's something about faithfulness that God takes notice of. Whether you're a five or a two or a one talent person, God desires for you, everybody say me, to be faithful. To be faithful. Praise God. The reality is that we are all stewards. Everybody say, I'm a steward. We're a steward of another. We're a steward of another kingdom. Amen? That is eternal. You are a steward of some precious commodities that God has given you for such a time as this. You are a steward of time. God has given you an allotted time in this world. Through the ages, through the years, it's amazing that you landed right here in this appointed time. You are a steward of that time. You are a steward of the talent and the ability that God has given you. And He requires that we be faithful with our skills, with our material, with our abilities. Praise God. Where would we be as a country without faithful people? Have you thought about that recently? I just jotted down a few things tonight to think about. And we could talk about this all night. But where would America be without the truck driver? The truck driver that drives throughout the night to get to Walmart to make sure that you can go and get your baby aspirins tomorrow. Right? And your Hawaiian punch. What if the truck driver wasn't faithful? What if he said halfway to Florida, you know what, I'm not going to show up. I, I just want to sit here a few more hours. I don't know about this faithful stuff and being there on time. Where would we be without the truck driver? What about the mailman? We get bit out of shape if he's an hour late. Where's he at? There's something about faithfulness. He comes about the same time every day and he delivers the mail to your home. Amen? Where would we be without the dairy farmer? In Wisconsin, you talk about faithfulness. I think Brother Strong used to be on one of them dairy farms. Where would we be without a dairy farmer, farmer, farmer excuse me, who said at 5 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock, you know what, I'm not getting up this morning. This cow's going to have to wait till noon. Talk about a serious problem with the dairy farmer. Would that be a problem, Brother Strong? Amen. If you did not wake up and milk the cows, amen. There's something about faithfulness. What about the farmer that grows the corn and the wheat? Talk about faithfulness. Working the land, tilling the land, preparing, dropping the seed. Amen? What about the firefighter tonight? What if he wasn't faithful if your house caught on fire? And he was watching something on television at the fire station and said, You know what? Not tonight. I'm tired. I'm weary. Go ahead and burn. I'm not coming. It doesn't make sense, does it? For a policeman to say, you know what? I'm not leaving this coffee house. One more donut. One more cup of coffee. I know there's a shooting on 62nd Avenue, but you know what? It's just going to have to wait. I'm more faithful right here on this bar stool, chewing on this Krispy Kreme. What about our military? We talk about faithful. Faithful. All of these names, all of these titles, there's something about faithfulness because connected to that is accountability. Faithful, amen? You're going to be faithful, you have to be accountable, amen? If you're going to be faithful, you have to be dependable. You have to be available. Amen, I've been put here, it's my job. When they call, I'm going out and I'm going to carry out the responsibilities. Faithful men. Faithful women. Faithfulness is a necessity for us to thrive, for us to function as a country. Just a few weeks ago, there was no milk in our refrigerator. It was red alert. It was a serious situation. Our children did not know how to react. I won't name the one individual, but 
This was serious. There was no milk in the house to go with the Oreos or whatever we were eating at that moment. Amen. Red alert at the Hudsmith house. National crisis. No milk. Praise God. Faithfulness. Amen. You think about all of these things that we take for granted. The things that are put on the shelf. That we go and shop and look for. It's because of people that are carrying out their responsibilities that are faithful. Amen. This is what I have to do today to make the customer happy. Amen. There's something about faithfulness. Amen. But yeah, when it comes to spiritual things, uh-oh, watch out. Faithfulness. When I wait a minute, isn't there a clause in there for Wednesday nights? Isn't there a clause in there that I don't have to go to church twice on Sunday? Ouch. Here we go. Faithfulness. There's a lot of chaos and confusion in this world. There's shortages of people aren't faithful. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. A faithful man, Proverbs said, who can find? It's like a rarity. Where are they at? Where's the faithful people? Where's the faithful families? Amen. I want to be faithful. It's the way of a wise master. It's the way of a manager. It's the way of the CEO or the boss. You know what he starts with? This is your first day, Brother Jack. I know you're not used to this, but I'm just going to give you a few things. I know that you're probably capable of more. A good boss is going to say, you know what, this is your first day, first week. I'm going to start with just a, a few things, right? I, I don't want to overwhelm you, but these few things that I give you to do and to perform, I... I expect you to carry them out. Amen? Just a few things. A good boss starts with just a few things. Amen? Going to give you a, a few things to work with. And eventually as you prove yourself and you reach a place of responsibility, guess what? I'm going to give you some more things to do. Amen? I know that you're working on that Barbie dishwasher. But I'm going to give you a greater responsibility someday. Amen? To work on a real one. It happens. What's the goal? For him to be productive. Amen. Praise God. To have progress. Productivity. Amen. So that he can pat him on the back and say, you know what? Man. Well done. You did a good job, my friend. Praise God. Don't we love having a attaboy moment every once in a while? Attaboy. Attaboy, Duncan. Amen. We like hearing that every once in a while, right? You did a great job. Wow, did you do that? Did you carry that out, that responsibility? Something within us when we're given credit, that attaboy moment. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I want to hear that from God. Amen. Someday I want to hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now we have the good down, right? There's a lot of good people here. At least you're smiling. Amen. I've heard a lot of good things about your family and your life. We've got that down, right? We're good Christians. But what about being faithful? How would you like your steak done tonight? Been to the steakhouse lately? Tonight we have people that would love to have their steak. Rare. Rare with hair. Medium rare. Is there any rare steak lovers in the house? There's a few. Raising their hands. The meat is red. There's the, the medium rare. There's the medium well. I'm a medium well kind of guy. Any medium well folks in the house tonight? There you go. That's what we're talking about. But there's a few people in the house that loves to have their steak well done. Sister Hutzpeth is a well done steak lover. She loves it charbroiled, sizzling, blackened. Cooked through and through. Amen. Just a little bit extra. Well done. No question about it. How do you like your meat prepared? Well done. Praise God. Well done means that it's left on the fire. Just a little longer. Well done means that it's left in the oven for an extended time period. Amen. There's no question that it is completely cooked when you cut into it. Amen. Praise God. If you tonight here are referred to as a well done Christian, you have been faithful. Hear me tonight through the fire. Praise God. Did you hear what I said tonight? 
Praise God to be well done is to have stayed in the oven just a little bit longer. Praise God. Well done. Everybody say well done. I'm not saying that we have to be cooked to a crisp before God says, Okay, the hair's singed. There's smoke. He's burnt. That's not the way God operates. It simply means... That there's moments that we are put through the fire. We talked about this a couple of Wednesday nights ago. Amen. And we will be coming out of that fire. Hearing the words of God Almighty that says, you know what? Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Praise God. Does anybody want to hear that tonight? Well done. There's something to be said about faithfulness. I've witnessed faithful people in the church, and so have you. My goodness, I've also witnessed unfaithful people. Amen. You're a part of a church, you find out in a hurry. You attend the church, you're a part of it. You know who you can depend on, and you know who you can't depend on. There's something about faithfulness. Amen. To some people, they're looking for any kind of excuse to miss a church service. It doesn't matter if it's an ingrown toenail. It doesn't matter if you name it. You know what? I'm not going to be able to come tonight. Sorry, Pastor. Just just not going to make it tonight. There's always going to be an excuse if you look hard enough. Amen? There's those when it's a work day. I don't know if I can make that. If there's cleaning involved, if there's a prayer meeting, faithfulness. God help us to be faithful. Amen? It doesn't just come natural. It's a spiritual discipline. You don't just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm faithful. Amen. I'm not going to miss nothing. It is a discipline. It is hard work. Amen. Praise God. You want to try it? Praise God. Try to increase your prayer life. Say, I'm going to get up an hour early tomorrow for the next 30 days. And see if you battle faithfulness. Amen. It is a discipline. Amen. It is a fight for your time and your schedule. Faithfulness is what our master is looking for. He's looking for a vessel. Five talent, two talent, one talent, 37,000 talents. It doesn't matter how many talents. He's looking for one thing. He's looking for a good and a faithful servant. Amen? Faithful to the things of God. Praise God. Faithfulness. For those that are given the goods. What are we doing with the goods? Do you have the goods? There's a whole lot of talent in this place. There's a lot of good singers in this house. Amen. There's good musicians. Amen. There's people that are better hand clappers than others. Amen. That's a special talent. Some people just can't clap on key or note. You've been by somebody that, that just doesn't know how to clap? It's awkward. You know what I'm talking about? It's a special talent to be a Pentecostal hand clapper. On beat, with the music... Amen. It's not an easy thing to do. There's different talents in the kingdom of God. Amen. There's different things that God invests in each of us. You have a special talent that I don't have, that only God knows. But He expects you to multiply. Amen. And to bless others. He expects us to be faithful with what He has called us to do. It starts with an investment in the kingdom of God of just a few things. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Be faithful with just a few things. Amen. Praise God. The reward down the road is that it brings greater things in the kingdom of God to come. The two of the three servants that was delivered the goods. Amen. The Bible says that they gained that they invested wisely. That they went out and whatever they did, there was multiplication in the investment. He came back and said, I've got five. The other came back and said, I have two. The other one said, you know what? I don't have nothing. I'm going to go hide this and bury it. I know the Lord's coming back. I'm going to hide this treasure. Amen. There's two that heard the words, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You know what? We all can be the good servant. Amen? But we also need to focus on being the faithful servant. Can God count on you or not? 
It's not about pleasing the pastor. It's not about pleasing anybody in this congregation. You know who it's all about. It's about God. Lord, I want to be faithful to you. You've given me the goods, Lord. What you have put in my life. Praise God. Hananiah. Nehemiah 7 and 2 said that he was a faithful man and he feared God and he was appointed over all of Jerusalem. Well, what did his resume say? He was faithful. He feared God. There's something about faithfulness. There's authority that comes. Amen? There's unity that comes to a church that's filled with faithful people. Praise God. We mentioned it Tuesday night, last night in prayer. I want to get to the point where I want to come to church. Amen? That I can't wait until the doors are unlocked and the music starts. Amen? And the presence of the Lord starts moving. How do we get that point? It may not happen the first service. But there's something about being faithful. Coming back again and saying, you know what? I want another touch of the Lord. Psalms 31, 23, the Lord preserveth. He preserveth the faithful. He's going to preserve you through heart surgery, brother. How? He's going to preserve you, Sister Pogue, whatever you're fighting, whatever you're going through, through the strokes, whatever it is. The Lord preserveth the faithful. Amen? Whatever you're going through at work, the Lord preserveth the faithful. Praise God. Hosea 11 and 12. He is faithful. He's faithful. With the saints. We serve a faithful God. You come into this place tonight discouraged? It's the Lord that preserveth the saints. Amen? He knows what you're going through. He knows what you carried into this building. God is faithful with the saints. Luke 16 and 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. It's the little things. Just the little teeny tiny things, the insignificant things in our eyes. It's the little things that we can be faithful to. God said, I'm going to bless you. Amen. I'm going to increase your goods. Amen. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Who's counting? God is. Who's watching? God is. What is he invested in the Fox family? What has he put into the Gangadim family? Amen. Whatever it is, let it be blessed and multiplied. The Lord is coming back and he's looking for faithfulness. Little things. Everybody say little things matter to Jesus. May not seem like much, but he is watching. So that he can use people that will be faithful in much. That's what the Bible says. I'm not making this up tonight. It's the little things. Amen? It's the little things. Like coming to church. Being faithful to church. It's the little things that God is looking at. So that He can use you in the kingdom to come. Amen? If He can't trust you now, how is He going to trust you on the other side? How is He going to count on you in the millennial reign? Amen? It's the little things now that we need to be faithful with. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, it is required. It, everybody say it's required. This is a requirement. Everybody hear the word tonight? It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. There you go. Faithful. A steward. One that manages another's property. A steward is one that manages another's finances. One who manages another's affairs. Guess what? Let me see your wallet. You got your wallet tonight? This is not Jack's money. This is another's. Amen? This is God's wallet. Amen? Brother Jack's borrowing it for now. He's worked hard for it, but God's blessed him. Amen? Jack's being a steward of God's money. Brother Jack's being a steward of God's time. Amen? It's a challenge. Amen. Let me take a few things out before, before I give it back. Stewards. It's another, right? It's another's property. Praise God. Finances. A steward. 
It's one that takes care of what God has blessed us with. Are you really a good steward with your money? Think about it. I'm not pointing at anybody. This is talking to me too, okay? Are you a good steward with your money? Are you a good steward with your time? Are you a good steward with your household? With your possessions? Amen. It's God's. Amen. He's watching. Amen. He wants you to use it wisely. He wants you to invest it in His kingdom. Amen. Praise God. It's required. Everybody say it's required. I didn't write this. This is found in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. What is invested in your life, strive to be a faithful steward. Praise God. This is not my church. This is not Pastor Hudspeth's church. This is God's church. Amen? This is not Pastor Hudspeth's money that was given tonight. Amen? That's God's money. That's His offerings. Amen? His tithes. It belongs to the Lord. But I am a steward of that. God, help me to manage it. To be honest, it's required of a pastor, of a saint of God, to be faithful as a steward. Praise God. Praise God. What He's invested in our life, we must be a faithful steward. Praise God. Praise God. It's my responsibility to be a good steward of His stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Amen? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There's a lot of stuff that God wants to use for His kingdom. There's a lot of stuff that He's blessed us with. God, help me to be a good steward with whatever you've blessed me with. Amen? Whatever's in your account, whatever's in your wallet, Brother Jack, whatever is in your possessions, use it wisely. You are a steward. You are to be found faithful so that He can say one day, Well done. Well done. What God has invested in your life, praise God, in your heart. Here's what it boils down to, this parable. This has eternal significance. All of these things that we call ours, my car, my account, my job, my church, it's God's. We're stewards, church. And there's eternal significance. We're either profitable as the first two servants, the five and the two, or unfortunately, we're like the last one where the investment is buried and the investment is taken away and it's given to somebody, somebody else. Okay, if you're not going to use it, if you're not going to be profitable, if I don't see any increase, guess what? It's all yours, Sister Fox. I'm going to a far country. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a long time, matter of fact. But I'm coming back. And I'm looking for some good and faithful servants. If that's the way you want to be, would you lift your hand? Say, God, that's what I desire tonight. This parable of stewardship, God, of stewards. God, help us tonight to be found faithful, to be led of you, to be directed of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us tonight. Let there be no soul under the sound of my voice that's cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. God, help us to make it to heaven so that we can hear those words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. As the parable clearly illustrates, there is a day of reckoning that's coming. Reckoning. When all the accounts have to be settled. Everything is revealed before the Lord. He sees it. He counts it. He, he sees what's happened in your life. The investments. The treasure. The possessions. My goodness, I want to hear Him say it. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. What you do matters. It really does. How good you play the guitar in church. It matters. How good you play the drums. It matters. Faithfulness. Amen. Coming to church. Setting down. It's all a part of serving God. 
praising Him and worshiping Him with all of your heart. It matters. I want to be faithful to prayer and fasting and the Word of God. It matters. It matters, church. So that we would hear Him say one day, Well done, thou good, thou good and faithful servant. Does anybody want to be faithful tonight? Praise God. I believe the Lord's speaking to us. Lift your hands if you want to be faithful tonight. Lord, we're human. We mess up. We get lackadaisical, Lord. We fall away from where we need to be. But Lord, help us to be faithful to the things of God, to the kingdom of God. Help me to be faithful. Faithful. To be holy for you are holy. To be separated from this world. To be faithful to the things of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God's looking for a prayer warrior. Somebody that will be given to prayer like never before. He's looking for somebody that will say, you know what? I want to be a soul winner. This church will struggle to grow if we don't have any soul winners. If we don't have anybody teaching home Bible studies and, and reaching out to other people and loving them, this church will grow stale and stagnant. Amen? There has to be something new and fresh that's poured into us. Amen? I don't want to be like a pond or a lake that just sits there. There's something about a stream and a river. It's fresh water. There's something that's flowing. Amen? At all times. There's, there's movement. There's life. That's the way I want to be so that I can stand before God someday when there's a day of reckoning. And I can hear Him say, well done. Well done. Praise God. Thou good and faithful servant. Anybody want to be like Jesus? Revelations 19.11 speaks of Jesus being on a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. You want to be like Jesus? He is faithful and he is true. We sing the song to be like him. If we're going to be like him, we're going to be faithful. Amen. I long to be like him. He's faithful. He's true according to the scripture. Why can't we strive to be faithful and true as well in a few things? Don't get overwhelmed with all, of the, all the things in the Bible. If you're new to this, you start reading all this, you're like, wow, where do I start? Where do I start? Start with just a few things. Just a few things. Like a ten minute prayer every morning. Amen? Like two chapters once a day. Like coming to church and striving to be faithful to the things of God. Amen? Oh, He wants to bless us. He wants to invest something in our heart. Amen? He can't wait to say it. It's not that He's holding back. Jesus wants to say it. Amen? It's right there. Amen? He wants you to stand before Him someday. And He wants to speak it as you stand there. And He looks at your life on that day of reckoning. It's the Lord that wants to say it. Well done. There's no doubt about this one. Oh my goodness. Goodness. What a good servant. What a faithful servant. Amen. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. If you desire to be a faithful servant, would you stand tonight? Praise God. Praise God. He's faithful and He is true. Praise God. You want to be well done? You may have to stay in the oven just a little bit longer. You may have to endure some afflictions and troubles and trials. But don't be discouraged, my friend. You're going to come out of that oven. Mm -mm -mm. Smelling good. Looking good. Praise God. Praise God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise God. I want you to close your eyes tonight. Let's not worry about the babies and our schedules and everything going around. Amen. Let's just focus on the Lord as we conclude this service. Hallelujah. Would you just speak to the Lord where you're at right now and say, God, I desire, I desire to be faithful. We're, we're human. We all struggle with this. But it's a requirement according to 1 Corinthians that a man be found faithful. Does attendance to church matter? You better believe it does. Does faithfulness to prayer matter? Oh, yes, it does. Serving the Lord with gladness. I want to be faithful to God. 
Would you lift your hands right where you're standing right now and say, God, you know what? I want to be faithful. I want more of you in my life, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I struggle with this. There's not a person in this building tonight that does not struggle with being faithful because we're human. Our flesh cries out, no, stay home, do this, do that. No, don't go to church. It's a battle of the mind. It's a battle of the flesh. We're all battling it. But let's pray tonight that God would give us the victory. Would you pray right now where you're standing? God, would you give me victory tonight to be faithful? Would you help me tonight, Lord, as I strive to be drawn closer to you? Lord, I want to be faithful to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship and praise Him right where you're standing tonight. Hallelujah. He can bless you right where you're standing. He can encourage you. He can increase your faithfulness right where you're at through the parable of the talents. God, help us to be faithful. Faithful. God, help us so that one day we will hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Hallelujah. That's it. There's some hearts that are reaching for the Lord tonight. Go ahead and let Him have it tonight. Your schedule, let Him have it. All the attractions of this life, put it aside and focus on your faithfulness to God. Faithful. Faithful. He's looking for faithful men and women. He's looking for somebody tonight that wants to take it another step. Oh, that we would be faithful tonight. Would you pray, church? Would you make a personal consecration to the Lord tonight on this Wednesday night? Say, God, I want to be faithful to you in everything. I don't want to miss nothing, God. In the name of... give you all I will give you all if all is what you ask of me yes I will not withhold